Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. It is 9.13 in the morning. Okay, this is part 33, prologue, Theodore Rex. A messenger ran along the train with a telegram for Herman Colsat. It was a favorable reply from Secretary Gage, the Roosevelt's plea for loyalty. Colsat jumped out and bought the evening papers. R rifling through them, he found the headlines he was looking for. Wall Street had reacted optimistically to the news that Gage and Hay might stay. Opening prices had soared one to six points higher than Friday's closing, and steadiness had prevailed throughout the market. A spokesman for the financial community called these signs clear and reassuring. Roosevelt was relieved to hear the good news. I don't care a damn about stocks and bonds, but I don't want to see them go down the first day I am president. The tolling of church bells faded as the train moved on, but the singing did not. Thousands of black-clad mourners crammed around Cumberland Valley Bridge, took up the threnody of McKinley's dying hymn. By now, the the Lug lugubrious tune palled on passengers who had listened to it ever since leaving Buffalo. For days to come, awake or asleep, they would hear voices crooning, Nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee. Their nerves tightened by the 72 hours of suspense. <sighs> Tragedy, excitement, and fatigue began to fray in the waning daylight. Women burst into tears. Men grew morose, or in the case of Senator Hannah, profane. That damn cowboy wants me to take supper with him alone. Damn him! Ahead in the press car, a group of reporters sat talking about death. They noticed a country funeral procession crawling darkly up the slope of a hill. It receded into the distance behind McKinley's bureau. What shadows we are, someone quoted softly, and what shadows we pursue. Okay, so that's all for Part 33, Prologue, Theodore Rex. Thank you for watching.